why you encouraged atheists in Great Britain to go to church last Christmas. <laughs> um, good question. We go straight into the deeps. Um, well, obviously Britain where I'm from and uh, Europe more generally. Uh, the situation with religion is, is different from the situation you have here. I mean, uh, there are all sorts of differences, all sorts of similarities, but we, we don't have in Britain a kind of any form of strong Christianity that I see as being any threat in the public sphere. I mean, our bishops are all basically on the verge of atheism, as far as I can see. If you get a bishop in Britain, I mean, the, the hardest thing to do is to, for them is to affirm what was their creed. You know, it's filled with sort of God as it were, you know. Um, so we have the sort of doubting bishop as a sort of perpetual part of the comedy of British life. Um, and so we don't have that assertive form of religion which can still exist here, and in certain states is very strong. Um, and I think it's partly, I, I write a bit about this quite a bit in this recent book, I, I think that we are in a very strange place in, in Europe, in Britain, uh, in our relation to faith. And for all sorts of reasons of which we can get into, um, we are in this situation that a wonderful French philosopher called Chantal de Sol described as being in the situation that Icarus would have been in if he'd survived the fall. Hmm. That is that by the time that the Cold War finishes in Europe, uh, we've dreamed all of these religious dreams and they've all crashed. We've dreamed all of these political dreams, including two big ones in the 20th century that turned out to be n global nightmares. So that by the time the last of those falls, we are on the ground, wounded, burnt, singed, badly bruised, and rather amazed to find that we're still here with this big question that then comes up, which is, what do we do? And again, I mean, this doesn't apply in quite the same way in this country as I see it. Which I think may be one of the reasons why this kind of question goes up, but I, I want to let you but, get through it. But I suppose one of the things I feel, and I, I know a lot of people now in Europe from the political left, right, center ground, atheists, non-atheists, and so on, who, who are starting to worry. and. I suppose the worry for me condenses into this, which is the increasing fear that the Enlightenment didn't go very deep or very wide or very far, and that it turns out not to be cherished by all that many people, and that what might come down the road might be so much worse. I put it no stronger for now than the, n the nervousness and since this is a situation we're in, I mean, I'm, I'm an atheist, I have been for many years, I don't believe in the little claims of the Bible or anything else, but I do recognize something which in Europe at any rate I see and I'm concerned about, which is what I regard as a vacuum. And one of the only interim answers I've been able to put forward is to say, we can accept the fact that we're atheists, we can accept the fact that we don't believe in little truth and so on, and yet have to find a way to remind ourselves and each other of how we got to where we are. Because there's a whole set of things which I and others start to worry about. And, and one of the few ways I've found to try to explain this is to say that includes in engaging in parts of your past which you no longer believe in, at the very least to know how you got to where you are now. So I don't say I didn't say in that piece that people should go to church and praise the risen Lord, but to say to them, at least engage in the thing that got you to the place you are now and know how it happened. Uh, let me put it another way very quickly. Uh, one of the most striking things, that uh, there's a, a British uh, rabbi called Jonathan Sachs who has some position here in New York as well. Some years ago I said to him, a slightly impertinent question, but I said, um, Rabbi Sachs, I know quite a lot of your congregation <laughs> in London, and um, how can I put this, but um, they all seem to be atheists, or at least a, a lot of them. 
And without missing a beat, he said, oh, most of them, I'd have thought. And I said, and I, he could see I was sort of slightly thrown. And I said, well, well what, what do you take from that? And he, he replied rabbinically with a, a non-answer. He said, but he said, this year, 98% of British Jews will be celebrating the holidays. And this is just an interest, interesting way through a bit of this, it seems to me accepting the realities of where we are, but um, not, not casting people into it, particularly the people you and I both know and have come across, who find the position, once they arrive there, of atheism to be a very lonely place. And I just, as I say, it's not an answer to the whole thing, but as an interim thing, to say at least remain engaged in all of this idea and all of this past, engage with it.